Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to look at a David Brown Selectomatic 990 but it might as well be an 880 or a 700 or even a 1200 series and we're going to look at the hydraulic system and the hydraulic system might be a bit intimidating until you know how it works. We're going to look at all the different functions of the hydraulic system we'll talk about the individual elements that make up the hydraulic system ram cylinder sitting behind this enclosure but we'll talk more about it once we start talking about the depth control itself if you move away from that point then you're going to have more traction so let me show you on how the depth control system is working it's a bit tricky to do it because the tractor has to be running so it's going to be a little bit noisy and we're going to take a deep dive and if you're not interested in circuit diagrams or hydraulic diagrams and an in-depth explanation because it's not going to be very exciting then you might as well skip this video but if you do have a David Brown and you want to work on your hydraulic system or you want to fix it or repair it I think this is probably useful for you arrived so I need to get this tractor ready for this season on the farm and getting the tractor ready actually means to change the oil on the engine, on the gearbox, on the hydraulics, change the air filter and the fuel filters and then grease all the nipples. And the David Brown is probably one of the best tractors I have ever seen. Uh, this one is 51 years old and you can just crank it up. It lasts and lasts forever. Now this one is a four cylinder diesel. It doesn't have the wet sleeves like the previous model. And as you can see, I've taken the bonnet or the hood off the tractor so it makes it a bit easier to work on. The engine takes about 10 quarts of oil, a radiator, and you can just actually remove it and then fill it up with fresh oil. And if you want to check the oil, there is a dipstick on the side, like on most old tractors, and you can check the marking on it. Let me wipe off the oil, and you can see a low and a high mark, and that's all there is to it. And while we are changing the oil in the engine, we are also going to change the oil in the air filter. The hydraulics and the engine is actually Tractor Elf um, ST3. And I'm using a viscosity of 15W40. First things first, drain the oil sump and make sure that you have a container which is big enough. Oh, let's see if we can get this guy off. And as you can see, there's still a whole bunch of oil coming out of it. And you need to replace that rubber seal. And this is the new seal that will have to go in. Uh, this is the old filter. This is the new filter. And they look exactly the same. A, a part washer like this. Um, but I do find this very handy. the oil will be gone. So this is the zift that is filtering the oil going into the oil pump. Just to degrease it. And we forgot to clean out the oil pan every so often and as you could see on this one it's really dirty. So that is important for the oil to distribute properly within the oil pan. So let me finish that one up and then we continue. I have resprayed actually the oil filter cover. Not that this is a concourse tractor because this is a working tractor, but since I had the chance to clean it all up, I did. Uh, so now I'm gonna rub in some oil onto those rubber seals on the new filter. Let's put it inside. And bolt it down. All right, so now we're going to change the diesel filters. Now this is a diesel and I have a primary filter and a secondary filter. So you can take those out uh, this, this will stay. This is the housing and they will come down and then you can take the cartridge out and then put a new one in. So let's see if we can 
get this guy installed. We installed both the filters, the pre-filter and the secondary filter. The David Brown tractor is an amazing tractor. I mean, if you look at these filters, how dirty they are, and this thing kept on running. It's kind of amazing. So now the question is, when do you know when to change the hydraulic oil? Now keep in mind that the oil is both for the gearbox and for the hydraulic system. The gearbox has 12 gears and you can check the oil in the gearbox and the hydraulic system with a dipstick. So that actually means if you're going to change these filters every 500 hours, you need to drain the oil, collect it and then put it back in after you filtered it because you don't want to change your oil every 500 hours, you only change it every 1000 hours. And this enclosure is actually where this filter is sitting at the inside. Oops. Okay, so these are about one, two, three, four, I guess it's about eight bolts to undo. Uh, it shouldn't be that hard. Quite easily. Okay, well. And there we go. So this is the actual filter that we can toss away. And this is the Zift. And that's the one we're going to clean up as much as we can. So here's the filter. Let's see if we can get the Zift in. That should just work just fine. I have oiled a bit the ring here, so that should go in quite easily and smoothly now. There we go, and that filter is in. We're going to put it in. That's one more. You never know. So let's see. So I decided to do a little bit more cosmetics work on this tractor. The wiring is a little bit of a mess. So what I did is I ordered up a new wiring loom for this tractor. And as so. you can see, there's plenty of dents uh, on the bonnet and you can actually see the paint strokes on this one. And the guy who painted it, he had so much sand or dust in it. It's amazing. It almost looks like he was painting it kind of a stucco paint and I probably will need to weld up these holes that these lights will have. But okay, uh, that's not too bad. Um, these are easy things to repair. And also I have two new dials because I don't know what state they are in. So that's it. Some models have actually lights in here. Take all this off. And we're gonna get it all cleaned up. Uh, emblem comes out and I'm just gonna renew that one. All right, It'll come off. It's a big bonnet. Oh, that should be good enough. And we're going to tackle the rear fenders. That's one. The next things to do on this fender is not really very complicated. We're just gonna remove all this old cabling. Anyway, I had to open it up anyhow. It's exactly the same approach as we have done for the bonnet. We have it all grinded out all around, so let's see if we can take it off. Here we go. But I think this time the panel will just fit in nicely. And then there, and then I'm gonna work my way around it to tag it in place, making sure that this panel is really uh, properly fitted. There should be one. 
but I think this is a lot better than when how we started. So the fender is completely blasted and while we were blasting we noticed a few more problem areas with rust and this is one of those areas where we have to fix this and for that I'm going to bend some metal like this and we will use the screenker and the stretcher to get the right curve. I'm going to use a stretcher. There's also a beak that exists which is actually a screenker and that just works the opposite. So now I can actually start welding it in. Let's see how the sticker looks like. I'm not sure if it's going to be too long or too short. Um, it fits perfectly. Nice bells and French fries. So we will be looking at the dashboard, the dials, the indicators and the gauges, the switches and the control lights. And here is our dashboard that we took off the tractor. And of course, in my case, you can see what I've done. I have cut off all the wires. There we go. I'm just going to cut, cut it loose now. It's easier to work on for a 12 volt system. So the dashboard is finally empty as you can see. So they are not that expensive and in fact it's probably even better to buy new ones because there's a lot of corrections that need to be done on this because it is not 100% accurate. I don't know yet. We'll see when, once we get that far. So let's start with checking out the dials. And a current will also flow through that coil. We're going to do a little test to show you that it's actually working. And you will see it going up. See how that moves up. If the float goes up because we have more and more fuel coming in, you'll see that the dial is moving up. So under normal circumstances, when the engine is not running, the light should be on. So let me turn on the battery. And as you can see, now the light is on because the contact inside this sensor is now closed. And you know, ideally you should have around 14.4 volts to charge the battery. As you know, I have removed all the cabling on this tractor, so I had to cheat a little bit to show you on how you can troubleshoot your alternator. So that was the check of the actual charge circuitry on your David Brown. Uh, power to the starter motor, but also to move the Bendix forward. So when the solenoid is activated, it's gonna move the tooth wheel inside on the starter motor onto the flywheel. We shot blasted the fenders to the bare metal and also shot blasted the dashboard to the bare metal. So I have applied a coat of primer onto the fender and now that's cured and I let it sit here for about 24 hours and the temperature is around 30 degrees centigrade. So now I'm going to let it dry for about 12 hours and the temperature inside now is around 30 degrees. Um, let's see. And it's still a bit sticky, but it starts to dry pretty quick, so that's good. I had to adjust a couple of holes here uh, for the lights, because the lights that I got were a little bit bigger. See, it's exactly the same, but now you have spades instead of uh, screws. The RPM and hour counter was intact and nothing was wrong with it. And as you can see, we cleaned it up as much as we could and we should be all set. So just fit it through the hole and then tie it, tie it up uh, from the back. And I'm... Now before I'm going to flip it over, I'm going to tape up these gauges and these dials so they can't fall out. And then you can actually see it, what we are connecting. I already connected one of the gauges with a bracket and here is the bracket that needs to go on. So let me put this aside. And then we continue on something else because we've got plenty of other work to do. And for that, I'm just going to use an ordinary piece of steel. Now we have all the pins ready. I have two bigger ones and two smaller ones. And I drilled the holes, so now we can put these clips through them to hold them in place. There we go. 
and this is how it should look like at the end. And that's a lot of weight, so you can't use a stand like this, which is an El Cheapo version. Both wheels are off. See how that goes. So the tractor is about ready to be painted. I have it cleaned up, I have it degreased, so normally it should be good. And it turned out to be quite all right. The paint is really drying up very quickly, although it's not that warm outside, it's around 16 degrees centigrade. Dust and dirt and grease all mixed together around the wheels but in the end uh, I was able to get it all off. I think the 990s are typically red engine blocks uh, but I'm not sure but anyway I think the brown one looks quite all right so I'm going to keep it like this. So now uh, we're going to install the wiring loom we'll put up the fenders and then the bonnet so this is still going to take me a little bit of time to do because otherwise it's, it is very tough to get these off. And so we did remove the steering wheel, but even with the steering wheel removed, there was enough play here and this space is not enough. So I just undid it and I'm just gonna let it lean backwards. So now I have more than enough space to put the actual dashboard. This is gonna fit just fine. A lot of connectors. Now don't be impressed by it because it is very simple and straightforward. And this is the actual circuit diagram that comes with the wiring loom. So make sure that you do have an ohm meter. And that's the kind of work you have to do to identify how these switches operate. So is nothing really special. This is going to the lights on the bonnet. Uh, this white connector straight underneath the gas tank. And this is going to feed through the fuse here all the gauges and the dials and the warning lights. Oh. Now the temperature gauge is exactly the same setup. So you can see the lights come on in the dials, which is good. So now let's uh, give it a try as it was a real start. So here is one of the rear lights we will install and the indicator is right on the top and I have the indicator connected to this little green cable here. If I now was to connect it to my flasher unit, you should see the indicator starting to flash. And I could even have a fog light if I wanted to. So I'm not going to need all these wires, but I will need some. And there is a left and a right light, so um, they are marked, see that? So now let's put the new emblem up. And I know it's not really electrical work, but it's all part of the assembly. Well, that seems to be all right. So. Let's uh, hook that up. So now that the fenders are installed on the tractor, I can actually start installing the lights. Some lenses are made of different plastic and they can actually melt when you put acetone on. And um, we're going to paint it. There we go. And this is how we need to fit it. That's the landscape that we remember, these ones that we have been polishing. And that should go on like this. And here is the 990 Selectomatic all completed. New lights, new stickers, new paint. A lot of work was done. We repainted the complete engine. We did all the wiring looms all over again. 
We also did a lot of work on the lifting arms. We replaced a lot of the pens, even the holes. We drilled them out, put bushes in. So this tractor is almost ready now to get the new attachment. We still have one more problem on this David Brown and that's the vacuum switch on the hydraulic system. I noticed that the sensor isn't working so the yellow light on the dashboard is always on. So I will have to order a new one but that's about the only thing which is left. All the rest is just working like a champ. And this baby starts like a champ. And for the moment, the series on the David Brown is kind of complete. I might do one or more videos on some other small things where I want to adjust maybe some play on the front axle, little things like that. Uh, but you'll see that coming out because I still need to continue with old Rusty.